Five, the Queen Mother. Get to your places, shouted the Queen in a voice of thunder, and people began running about in all directions, tumbling up against each other. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I can be a bitch. I'm terribly impatient, I admit it. Lindsay kicked off her shoes and pulled her legs around her like a tigress. You don't mind if I get comfortable, do you? I didn't mind. But the more comfortable she looked, the more uncomfortable I felt. Finding a time that suited Lindsay's schedule had been difficult. It hadn't occurred to me initially that I had agreed to meet at a time that was inconvenient for me. A flicker of resentment set off an alarm. Lindsay expected special treatment. Ernest Wolfe explains that mirror-hungry personalities are compelled to display themselves to evoke the attention of others, who through their admiring responses will perhaps counteract the experience of worthlessness. People noticed the Queen. Conspicuous in her demand for attention through her appearance, her tone of voice, her behavior, and her relationships, the borderline queen is driven by feelings of emptiness. Borderline queens seek special treatment because they felt emotionally deprived as children. An only child of wealthy parents who divorced when she was seven years old, Lindsay longed for attention. Instead of taking time to console her, her parents sent her to summer camp and later to boarding school. Lindsay soon discovered that temper tantrums elicited the attention she sought. Consequently, she learned how to win special treatment through persistence and intimidation. She warned me about her bitchiness in order to manipulate me as well. But if I allowed her to exploit me, I too would resent her. The relationship between patient and therapist inevitably recreates the earlier emotional experience between parent and child. As I listened to Lindsay, another famous queen came to my mind. Mary Todd Lincoln. She was called the Republican Queen, the controversial First Lady who meddled in presidential affairs and spent extraordinary sums of money redecorating the White House during the Civil War. There were intervals, however, when Mary was almost her brave, normal, high-spirited self, and a stranger meeting her would see no trace of an unbalanced mentality. At other times, with her brain on fire with pain, she was submerged in gloom, and her heart was filled with bitterness against the sad fate which had overtaken her. Biographer Marion Mills Miller summarized the life of Mary Todd Lincoln. Lady of Lincoln, they wreathed her head, with thorns when living, with nettles go dead. Robert, her only living son, once confided to his wife, the simple truth, which I cannot tell to anyone not personally interested, is that my mother is on one subject not mentally responsible. Even Abraham Lincoln was quoted as saying, the caprices of Mrs. Lincoln, I am satisfied, are the result of partial insanity. Partial insanity, a straightforward definition of borderline personality disorder provided by a president renowned for his honesty. Mary Todd Lincoln was a prototypical borderline queen. Mary was a possessive wife who liked to wait upon her husband and interfered with household management. The White House domestic staff at times deplored her. She was so unpredictable that one White House aide saw fit to write, the Hellcat is getting more Hellcatical day by day. William O. Stoddard, a member of the White House staff during the Lincoln years, described the First Lady in ambivalent terms. It was not easy at first to understand why a lady who could be one day so kindly, so considerate, so generous, so thoughtful and so hopeful, could upon another day appear so unreasonable, so irritable, so despondent, and so prone to see the dark, the wrong side of men and women and events. The borderline queen experiences what therapists call oral greediness. The desperate hunger of the borderline queen is akin to the behavior of an infant who has gone too long between feedings, Starved, frustrated, and beyond the ability to calm or soothe herself, she grabs, flails, and wails until the last nipple is planted securely and perhaps too deeply in her mouth. She coughs, gags, chokes, and spits, eyeing the elusive breast like a wolf guarding her food. Similarly, the queen holds on to what is hers, taking more than she can use in case it might be taken away prematurely. Lindsay requested a reduced fee for treatment, 
explaining that she was overextended on her credit cards. A large diamond on her left hand and designer clothes belied her claim of financial distress. Not long before her first appointment, she had taken an extravagant cruise to the Caribbean. Although Lindsay appeared to be wealthy, genuine feelings of deprivation distorted her perspective. And like the starving infant at the breast, she grabbed for as much as she could get. Getting what she wanted, however, would never fill her up. Adler explains that the borderline's feelings of abandonment are often based on real experiences of parents or parent surrogates not caring for or abandoning them. In Mary Todd Lincoln's case, her mother died in childbirth when Mary was only seven years old. Her father remarried, producing nine additional children. In the midst of so many others competing for her father's attention, she won his interest by discussing politics, a subject he regarded highly, and she frequently spoke of wanting to live in the White House. Although she fulfilled her ambition of becoming First Lady, her dreams of happiness never materialized. She spent her last years in mourning and died in despair. Lashkar believes that borderlines lack the memory of being special. The borderline queen lacks the experience of feeling special and suffers from feelings of complete emptiness, angry yearning, and insatiable longing. She feels entitled to invade the boundaries of others and take what she needs. She can be intrusive, loud, impatient, and flamboyant. She is easily frustrated, often bursting into rages that can terrify her children. She can be disingenuous and may lie in order to get what she wants. Lindsay complained that her ex-husband had left her almost penniless and that she was forced to live a lifestyle beneath her comfort level. When her children were young, Lindsay told them she could not afford to send them to camp. Although her ex-husband had provided the money, she flew into a rage when he asked why they did not attend, and he did not pursue the issue. Giving in to the queen is easier than resisting. Those who dare to confront the queen may be treated as infidels and, as such, may be banished for their disloyalty. Mary Lincoln's niece observed her tendency to ostracize those who confronted her. Her sisters and other relatives who voiced to Mary their indignant protests, entreating her to curb her excitement and eccentricity, only incurred her anger and had become estranged from her. The Queen's Dominant Emotional State Emptiness The Queen! The Queen! And the three gardeners instantly threw themselves flat upon their faces. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland like the Queen of Hearts in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, the borderline queen treats people as if they were cards to be shuffled, arranged, and stacked so that she can win. Borderline queens exploit others without remorse. They are competitive and envious, longing for wealth, glamour, attention, fame, or admiration. Preoccupied with themselves, they seem self-centered, greedy, and bossy. Those who cannot be used to their advantage are discarded like jokers from a deck. The darkness within the borderline queen is emptiness. Emptiness and loneliness are distinctly different emotional experiences. Whereas loneliness results from loss and evokes sadness, emptiness results from deprivation and triggers anger. However, not all queens experience loss in early childhood. The common denominator among borderline queens is emotional deprivation. As children, they felt robbed. Consequently, they feel entitled to take what they need. Lindsay began shoplifting as an adolescent and continued to steal small, inexpensive items such as lipstick, shampoo, and greeting cards, things she could easily afford but resented having to purchase. She viewed the loss to the store as inconsequential compared to the inconvenience of paying for the items. A low tolerance for frustration and a lack of patience leaves the queen vulnerable to destructive and impulsive behavior. She may abuse drugs, alcohol, food, or sex, or may engage in reckless spending or driving. Mrs. Lincoln's impulsive spending, especially during wartime, triggered resentment among the public. Mrs. Lincoln was said to have developed an almost psychopathic passion to possess richer gowns to outdress the Washington aristocracy. When she exceeded the congressional appropriation for refurbishing the White House, Lincoln remarked, it can never have my approval. I'll pay it out of my own pocket first. 
It would stink in the nostrils of the American people to have it said that the President of the United States had approved a bill overrunning an appropriation of $20,000 for flub dubs for this damned old house when the soldiers cannot have blankets. Mrs. Lincoln's lavish spending won more criticism than admiration from her husband as well as from the public. A baseline emotional state of emptiness and anger can create a variety of psychosomatic symptoms. Mrs. Lincoln's migraines are well documented. She suffered an attack the day she arrived in Washington in 1847. The boys were tired and irritable, which was hard on their mother, who was suffering from one of the sick headaches that troubled her. Queens may experience migraines, muscle spasms, ulcers, colitis, fibromyalgia, and immune-related disorders triggered by anger and tension. The Queen's Inner Experience, Deprivation and Envy The Queen had only one way of settling all difficulties, great or small. Off with his head, she said without even looking around. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland The Queen feels starved and deprived. Thus, she seeks gratification and control. She initially impresses people favorably in social situations, her charm and wit masking her underlying deprivation and demand for attention. But sometimes her envy veers out of control. Mrs. Lincoln demanded what she wanted, sometimes from other wardrobes and once off a friend's head. When Williams of Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington's best-known milliner, could not match a lavender ribbon for her bonnet strings, and she spied the unusual strings on an acquaintance's hat, with the Queen's mandate, she insisted that Mrs. Taft surrender her strings in return for others, though of a slightly darker color, freely installed by William himself. According to her daughter, Mrs. Taft was amazed and provoked, but eventually surrendered. The Queen devalues those who do not provide gratification or special treatment. Mrs. Lincoln was known for her stinginess, demanding prices far beneath the market rate for goods and services, after her husband's assassination, her fear of impoverishment intensified. At one point, she tried to raise money by auctioning off her wardrobe at outrageous prices, drawing public ridicule and embarrassing her son, Robert. Like Mrs. Lincoln, Lindsay also used guilt to manipulate others. She fabricated stories of hardship in order to elicit sympathy, misrepresented facts in order to win attention, and often destroyed the trust of friends. Mrs. Lincoln once wrote to a friend who had changed her mind about visiting, You must keep your word. I feel I must have you with me. I have set my heart on having you with me. If you love me, give me a favorable answer. Deprivation impairs moral judgment. Consequently, the queen can be vindictive without feeling guilty. Mrs. Lincoln severed relationships with most of her sisters and cousins. Joan Crawford severed relationships with many people, including her own daughter and mother. After ending relationships with men, Crawford literally cut them out of her life by removing their faces from photographs. The borderline queen readily discards those who are perceived as useless, unworthy, or unfaithful. The queen relates to others with superficiality and an air of detachment. She may perceive others, including her children, as a threat to her own survival unless they relinquish their needs for hers. Queen mothers compete with their children for time, attention, love, and money. Superficial interests and a lack of attunement to the child's emotional needs are typical of queen mothers. Characteristics of the queen mother Is preoccupied with the need to be mirrored. Attention is sustenance to a queen mother. She is preoccupied with her self-image and the image of her children, in order to win her admiration and love, her children must reflect her interests, values, tastes, and preferences. The queen expects her children to dress the part, to reflect her importance. Following the Civil War, Mary Lincoln frequently purchased extravagant clothing for her granddaughter during her trips to Europe. Her son and daughter-in-law considered some of the outfits inappropriately lavish. However, some queen mothers resent spending money on their children. Lindsay bought sail clothing for her children. She had an eye for bargains and avoided paying full price for their wardrobe. Subtle resentment about her children's needs was evident in Lindsay's habit of paying full price for her own designer clothing. The dominating queen insists on receiving undivided attention. In her work with borderline children, 
Elizabeth Gilliard observed their tendency to withdraw into angry sulking or to become aggressive when not receiving attention. Queen mothers also may sulk or become enraged when not receiving adequate mirroring. One patient recalled memories of her mother lashing out whenever the patient received attention from her father, leaving the patient feeling guilty. Queen mothers are unable to provide adequate mirroring for their children because of their own need for attention. Consequently, the queen's children mirror their mother. Seeks attention, fame, or prominence. All young children need to bask in the glow of their parents' admiration. The caregiver's adulation of the young toddler as she sets out to explore the world is crucial to healthy emotional development. As a child, the borderline queen was given inauthentic responses, shamed or ignored when she tried to elicit this crucial response. Thus, as an adult, the queen still seeks those needed responses, like, I see you, and yes, how wonderful you are, and look at you. Uncertainty about her self-worth leads to an over-reliance on external validation. Lindsay measured her self-worth by the value of her car, her home, and her personal possessions. She needed to look wealthy in order to feel valuable, and admitted that she married for money rather than for love. She wanted the biggest and the best of everything and was intensely competitive with others. Attempting to evoke envy in others, she spoke openly about her expensive vacations and the price of her possessions. The borderline queen is extravagant, compensating for feelings of worthlessness with displays of wealth and success. Robert Todd Lincoln wrote to his wife, You could hardly believe it possible but my mother protests to me that she is in actual want and nothing I can do or say will convince her to the contrary. Soon after arriving at the White House, Mrs. Lincoln purchased 84 pairs of kid gloves and found herself holding off creditors. In the three months prior to her husband's assassination, she spent $3,200 on jewelry. Mary Todd Lincoln's compulsive shopping grew worse with time. Demands total loyalty discards those who betray her. The borderline queen is quick to shift her attention from one person to another, depending on the degree of compliance and admiration that she receives. Baker noted that most of Mary's acquaintances either loved or hated her. Her meddling with presidential affairs was motivated by her need to repay those who had shown her special favor. She recommended men for official positions who would use their power to her advantage. She promoted the claims of men who were not relatives, and she did so for the same reason that men did, to gain an advantage for herself. Baker lamented that, rather than forget, she harbored grudges, collected injustices, and rehearsed her anger. Mary Lincoln demanded loyal service from her friends. The Queen Mother's children can feel used and manipulated, falling in and out of favor like trump cards. Mrs. Lincoln cut off communication with her only surviving son, Robert, after he had her arrested and institutionalized. Her public and private behavior had become so out of hand that Robert became concerned for her safety. Shortly after she had wandered the halls of a hotel half-dressed and accused him of trying to murder her, he began commitment proceedings. After the ensuing infamous trial, Mrs. Lincoln terminated relationships with friends and relatives who had supported Robert's decision. Although contemporary listeners may view Mrs. Lincoln's outrage as justified, Robert's actions must be understood within the context of the times. For most of the 19th century, women were not allowed to vote or to enter into contracts. Therefore, the closest male relative was responsible for their welfare. The only treatment available for mental disorders during this time was institutionalization. Therefore, Robert selected Bellevue Place in Batavia, Illinois, a private and atypical asylum of the 1800s. The philosophy of treatment prevented the use of restraints and provided all possible comforts. Despite the fact that borderline mothers rarely view their behavior as abnormal, adult children who coerce their mothers into treatment should expect retaliation. Although few women possess the power available to a first lady, all queens can be vindictive when enraged, emotionally bribing and blackmailing others. 
Mrs. Lincoln once threatened to embarrass Robert by exposing his history of poor investments in retaliation for his decision to have her institutionalized. Lindsay had a tumultuous relationship with both of her children. When she discovered that her daughter was using drugs, she kicked her out of the house, put away all photographs of her, changed the locks on the door, and told her that she was no longer her daughter. Lindsay felt entitled to disowning her daughter because she felt disgraced and betrayed. Loyalty is not a choice for children of queen mothers. Children are on display. The queen mother uses her children to gain attention, recognition, or admiration, and children must mirror her interests. Instead of being encouraged to discover their own talents, the queen's children live in her shadow. Queen mothers may overestimate their children's ability and encourage them to participate in potentially dangerous or humiliating experiences. Mrs. Lincoln frequently encouraged her children to perform for guests when she entertained friends in her home. Simmons explained that Bob and later the other children were brought into dance, recite poetry, and according to one unappreciative guest, to show off generally. Christina Crawford described her humiliation as a child when her mother paraded her in front of the media, overdressed her for parties, and created a facade of grandeur and happiness. Mrs. Lincoln's daughter-in-law was frightened by the lavish clothing sent to her daughter. Robert's wife was horrified, not only at the expense, but also at the attention such clothing might draw to her daughter. More than anything, Lindsay expected her son to make money and her daughter to marry it. Her daughter, however, chose down-to-earth friends who were neither wealthy nor popular. Skirmishes regarding her daughter's choice of friends, her clothing, and her hairstyle frequently erupted into full-blown battles. Children with queen mothers must fight a royal battle in order to win their autonomy. Hysterical reactions terrify or confuse her children. The dramatic and sometimes hysterical behavior of the Queen Mother can terrify her children. Baker described Mrs. Lincoln as having an anxious attachment to her children. When young Robert ate lime from the Lincoln's privy, his mother became hysterical. Rather than call for help, she screamed, Bobby will die! Bobby will die! Bobby will die! Consumed by unbridled fear, she was unable to reassure her son or offer appropriate treatment. Lindsay recognized her tendency to panic over details that later seemed inconsequential. Without being aware of the fear she created in her children, she frequently made statements while opening bills such as, We're going broke. We're going to have to sell the house. The Queen's children learn to discount her hysteria, but have no way of discovering the truth. As she aged, Mrs. Lincoln grew increasingly paranoid and suffered from numerous physical problems. Her son, Robert, had lived in continual apprehension regarding his mother's health and behavior. After visiting her in 1882, one year before her death, he expressed his belief that some part of her trouble is imaginary. Distinguishing actual physical distress from emotional overreaction is difficult for children with queen mothers. Is intrusive and violates boundaries. The borderline queen rarely accepts no for an answer and often violates the boundaries of others. Richard Moskowitz describes borderline characteristics that typify the queen. You feel entitled to special treatment and live outside the rules made for others. You may feel entitled to take whatever you wish and have everything good for yourself. At 13, Mary Todd rode her new pony to the home of the famous statesman Henry Clay and demanded that he come outside to see it. When his servant answered the door and explained that Mr. Clay was in the middle of an important political meeting, Mary insisted on seeing him. Henry Clay not only submitted to her demands, but also invited her to stay for dinner. Mary was not at all abashed at rushing into dinner without a previous invitation. Mrs. Lincoln's intrusiveness was not always appreciated, however. Neely and McMurtry noticed that Robert Lincoln's wife experienced her mother-in-law as being so possessive that her affectionate embrace almost crushed her. Conflicts frequently erupted between Lindsay and her daughter over boundaries and privacy issues. Lindsay felt entitled to listen to her daughter's telephone conversations and to search her room, book bag, purse, and car. She read her daughter's personal notes, 
questioned her daughter's friends about their activities, and even tried to control her daughter's weight. Despite the fact that her daughter was only five pounds above the average weight for her age, Lindsay enrolled her in a weight loss clinic. The borderline queen can be unrelenting in her intrusiveness. After Mrs. Lincoln complained about the competence of General of the Army Ulysses S. Grant, the president told her, Suppose that we give you command of the army. No doubt you would do much better than any general that has been tried. Respecting boundaries is difficult for the borderline queen. Believes rules do not apply to her. Kernberg states that antisocial behavior is common among borderlines. Lying, stealing, parasitism, exploitiveness, and bribery are especially common in borderline queens. They hide their debt, their assets, and sometimes their purchases. Lindsay had a closet filled with expensive evening gowns that had never been worn. Shopping and hoarding was an obsession. As Gunderson explains, to stave off the panic associated with the absence of a primary object, borderline patients frequently will impulsively engage in behaviors that numb the panic and establish contact with and control over some new object. The queen has an irrepressible need to acquire and control self-objects. Family members and personal belongings are jealously guarded. The act of acquiring and controlling what is hers provides temporary relief from feelings of emptiness. Robert Todd Lincoln feared that his mother would destroy herself financially and hired Pinkerton agents to report on her shopping sprees. He explained, I am thoroughly convinced in my own mind that my mother would permanently ruin herself in a comparatively short time if allowed to do so. The greedy, grasping behavior of the queen can embarrass her children. Her disregard for rules and her perception of herself as special can be frightening. After his father's assassination, Robert was deeply embarrassed by his mother's behavior and particularly by her attempt to solicit a pension from Congress. He referred to his mother's begging letters, which she wrote to various congressmen pleading a case of impoverishment. Yet following her death in 1882, Robert disposed of 64 trunks filled with dresses, jewelry, and garments that had never been worn. Is ambitious and determined, can seem strong. The borderline queen can seem invincible, strong, and courageous to those who do not know her well. Mrs. Lincoln's sister described her as the most ambitious woman I ever saw. My patient Lindsay dominated relationships with others and was the leader of groups to which she belonged. Lindsay chose relationships only with those who could be controlled. Baker states that when Mary Lincoln failed to get her way, she intercepted cabinet officers and pressed state officials at her receptions. The queen is determined, driven, almost possessed by the need to acquire what she desires. But she would gladly rid herself of the inner emptiness that leads to destructive behavior if it were possible to do so. Lindsay's children accused her of caring more about her possessions than about them. When her son phoned to tell her that he had been in a car accident, Lindsay's first question concerned the condition of the car. Her son told her, All you care about is yourself and your things. Lindsay feared that he was right. The Queen's motto, it's all about me. The tenacity of the Queen contrasts sharply with the hopelessness of the waif and the reclusiveness of the hermit. The Queen never gives up. Adversity merely renews her commitment to obtain compensation. Of the four types of borderline mothers, the Queen may be the least likely to commit suicide. Although she may threaten to kill herself, she is most likely seeking attention rather than expressing a wish to die. No suicide threat should be ignored, however. Attention-seeking suicidal attempts can result in accidental death. Lindsay's children had no sympathy for their mother. Her son told her that he was sick of her unreasonable demands and disturbing mood swings. Her children saw her as completely self-absorbed and grew more estranged from her each year. Although Lindsay occasionally complained about not feeling loved by her children, she seemed relieved that they had no expectations of her. Unlike the waif who resigns herself to deprivation, the queen will fight for what she wants, and she is determined to win. Mary Todd Lincoln suffered numerous losses throughout her lifetime. The childhood death of her mother, the deaths of three of her own children, and the assassination of her beloved husband 
destroyed her emotionally. Although Mrs. Lincoln's life was filled with sadness, she never lost her will to fight for financial compensation. When Lindsay's attorney implied that her expectations regarding her divorce settlement were unreasonable, she professed, He owes me everything he has. If you're not willing to fight for me, I'll get another attorney. Lindsay's husband complied with the majority of her demands, agreeing to pay for higher education not only for the children, but for Lindsay as well. Messages from the Queen Mother You deserve the best, but I deserve better. What's mine is mine, and what's yours is mine. It's never enough. I love you when I need you. I resent you needing me. I am a special exception. The rules don't apply to me. I deserve more. It's never good enough. Adult children may have a distant or conflicted relationship with their queen mother. The queen's me-first message inevitably breeds resentment in her children, who feel deprived themselves. Young children may display regressive behavior, such as thumb-sucking, baby talk, whining, and temper tantrums, in order to win attention. As children grow older and gain more power, conflict increases as they compete with the queen for the spotlight. No one can fill the queen's inner emptiness. Her children may resent her expectations and give up trying to please her. She is particular about everything, rejecting gifts that do not measure up or thinly concealing her disappointment. Adult children may dread her birthday, shopping for gifts, or providing a meal for her. Consequently, these children long for approval, recognition, and validation, and are at risk for giving into feelings of hopelessness. They may strive to secure her attachment by constantly striving for perfection, only to discover that her love is conditional. Love is withdrawn when the queen's child fails. Lindsay's children seemed destined for self-destruction. Her daughter's drug use provided an escape from their no-win relationship, and her son dropped out of school. Lindsay's daughter exhibited characteristics of a borderline waif, and her son displayed the angry, yearning feelings of entitlement and exploitation of others that Lindsay recognized in herself. The future of the queen's children may be marred by an ominous darkness. Some children learn too late that it is better to let the queen rule her own life than to ever try to control her. Robert Todd Lincoln paid a high price for trying to control his mother's self-destructive behavior. After being released from the asylum, she turned her paranoia into revenge. During this period, she reportedly threatened to kidnap Robert's daughter and once threatened to have him killed. During his lifetime, Robert Lincoln protected his mother's privacy as much as possible. Following his death, his grandson discovered a bundle of papers labeled MTL Insanity File, with instructions that it not be released until at least 20 years following Robert Lincoln's death. Although Robert was accused by Baker of committing an unforgivable breach of trust against his mother, the Insanity File stands as a haunting testimony to the truth. Although queen mothers emotionally sacrificed their children, their children may go to their graves protecting her.